can see the the weather's breaking and it's sort of getting everybody in the mood to go hear some turkeys gobble or get out and see what the turkeys are doing right now. But uh, first of all, I want to share with you one of the calves that I think is one, as one of the best diaphragms they are on the market. And that's the it's made by Kang Kang Cut Kang Creek, <clears throat> and I use the Kang Cutter. It's called. Uh, and the reason I use this call is it's just so clear and crisp and when you're yipping or cutting uh, a lot of a lot of hunters like you know those real raspy calls I, I, I like them too it's just whatever you like whatever works for you you'll find out that's what you lean towards using and uh, I got the opportunity to meet the gentleman that makes these calls and uh, he, he was a fantastic guy and you can't just get them anywhere. You have to. You can go online, and they have a list of stores on there that uh, show where you can pick them up. Walmart, I don't think Walmart sell them, but uh, it's the Cane Creek Cutter, and uh, they are very, very clear sounding call. I'll do a little bit of a yelp for you and let you hear what it sounds like. I think it's just an outstanding call. And another thing too I want to share with you when I'm turkey hunting <clears throat> is if you're calling to a bird and he's directly in front of you, I don't sit and call directly toward that bird. I'll actually turn my head and try to project the sound farther down away from me. That way I get him closer coming, you know, you close the distance better that way. I, I've learned over over the years of hunting, you know, that that works best if you'll just sort of turn your head as you call, and I'll even use my hand and project the sound that way, or the or whichever way I'm wanting it to go. I'll turn my head, and if he's closing the distance, I'll even lighten up my calling, and I'll turn my head. But now you you want to know exactly where that bird is before you go to turning your head and moving your hands a lot. A lot of times I'll just station my hand up on my mouth and I won't move it, and I just sort of rotate my head just a little bit, and 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 that way you've already got your hand up there and it don't require a little movement. So that's just a, one of the little things sometimes that makes the difference. When you need that extra 25 yards or extra 10 yards to get him in there and shooting range, remember that. Turn your head just a little bit and project the sound the other way. And don't forget when you're out there doing it, do it with a cane cutter. And I think you'll have good results. And good luck and good hunting. Okay, uh... What I would like to do today is talk to y'all a little bit about turkey hunting and some of the calls you can use while you're out in the turkey woods to uh, maybe help some of the people that's never really turkey hunted a whole lot or maybe you not sure which kind of call you want to use or that kind of thing. Well today I'm going to touch a little bit just on using the mouth call and that is the diaphragm. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend that you just go to Walmart and buy a diaphragm on the morning that you're on your way to go turkey hunting and just stop, pick one up and say, well, I'll just stop in the morning and get a call and go on turkey hunting and kill a big gobbler and go on home and be done with it. Well, it don't hardly work that way. Uh, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind when you're using the diaphragm. Practice is going to be the key word. It's going to take hours and hours of practice. It did for me. And when I first got this call, I was probably 15, 20 minutes before I could even get a sound to even come from the call. So uh, I want to share with you the way that I use. I'm not saying it's the correct way. The way I use the diaphragm and simply you want to find one that you that that fits in the roof of your mouth comfortably and the air is sealed off and uh, it goes a little something like, like this you want to place the turkey cow into the roof of your mouth and force air 
fire between your tongue and the reed of the turkey cow. Okay? You heard that little noise. Well, it took me about 15 minutes when I first got this thing before I could even get that. You want to start out? Push that, push, push the air between your tongue and the reed of the turkey cow real hard and then you drop off at the end. It's hard, it's hard to explain until you actually get the cow in your mouth and you can feel what's going on. Actually, what I'm going to just try to, to show you rather than explain. And it's going to go, ee 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 That's all it's going to be. It's just, and I've heard some people refer to that as a key uh, If that's wrong, I'm sure you guys can correct me on that. Uh, I don't know the correct scientific name for it. I just, when I put this call in my mouth, I just try to say, cheek, cheek. And that's just going to be a little bit of a yelp. So it goes a little something like this. And as you can tell, I'm no professional, but it does take a whole lot of practice. And as you get more practice, you will get better with it. And there's going to be three basic calls that you need to, to get down in order to kill a turkey. And my, tur the call I use probably more than any of them in the woods is going to be probably the yelp or the cluck. Those are probably my two favorite calls. And they sound a little something like this. You can hear the, t the high notes, then it drops off to the low notes. Now that was the yelp. You want to do a si I usually do a series of about five or six in a row and something. I just it really depends on if the bird is fired up or not. You can't really predict. Okay, you need to set a certain amount to do. You need to you need to uh, go in the woods, yelp three times. Wait. Wait six and a half minutes and yelp seven times. It's it's really hard to make a set carved in stone way of predicting or telling how many times you need to, do, to make your call. You really got to get a feel for the bird and what the bird, how the turkey is reacting to your call. You know, maybe he's not gobbling at all. Maybe he's fired up and he's gobbling. <laughs> Every time you hit the call, maybe he's answering you every time you call back to him. You know, personally, if that's the case, I won't do a lot of calling. If that turkey's, every time I call, if he's a gobbling every time that I hit my call, he's answering me right back. Well, just keep in mind, every time that turkey gobbles, the chances of a hen getting to that gobbler before he can get to you your chances get less and less and less of seeing him every time he gobbles because there'll be a hen come through there and take him away. But the other call that I like to use when I'm in the woods is the cluck. And it's just a little a little series of uh, just a little short note. I've heard some people, uh, I've read where some people say the word chalk. Chalk. And if you're going to do a yelp, they say chick. Just uh, any any kind of little tip like that to remember to help you how to keep your calls, you know, what what's what. I know it gets confusing when you're first starting out, but once you get in the woods and get to hear into what nature, the way the hens actually do react in the woods, it, it gets a lot easier. But uh, the, the cluck will be just a little short note, and it goes like this. Now that, now that's what I call cluck. If I were to put a lot of excitement into that call, then it, it could be trans, 
translated as being a put. Now there's a fine line to me of being a put or a cluck when you're doing your learning the cow. So be very careful. You don't want to alarm a pup cow is an alarm cow. You do not want to alarm that Tom. You do not want him thinking something's going wrong, okay, and this hen is a putt and what's going wrong, then he's going to be looking and trying to figure out how to get out of there. So you need to be careful and don't cross your cluck and get it cross, crossed up with the putt. And the other call that I use more than anything is just the purr. It's just a, it's just a real low and hits a longer note, and I really don't use it a whole lot on the diaphragm. I'm not very good at all making the purring sound, uh, but I can try just to give you an example. And I, I like I said, I'm not that good with the purr. So if I'm going to purr, most times I just use my slate cow, or I, or you can get the push push pin and, and, and purr with those. On the diaphragm, I'm not good with the diaphragm. I just wanted to do this video just maybe to help somebody out there that might be having some trouble with some things. And what you got to do, you got to put all your cows together as a series of turkey language. And then when you can speak the whole language, as Primo say, then you can, you can get out and kill birds on a regular basis. So just remember you got your yelp. <laughs> remember just keep your note from high to low and then you've got your cluck. And then you've got your purr. And like I said, I've got a slate cow. I'm going to make another video on how to use a slate cow. And I will uh, demonstrate to you how to do that then. But until then, I hope this video helped. And you guys be safe. And I hope you all have a good turkey season.